When you think of bird photography, is this what you see? And is this what you want to be photographing? Just because it's cold out or snowing or dull and gray outside, that doesn't mean you have to stay indoors. Winter bird photography can be challenging, but the rewards can be very rewarding. Today I'm going to share with you my top tips for taking bird photos in the winter and how you can stay warm while out capturing bird photos. Does shooting in the freezing cold keep you locked indoors during the winter? Or did you buy a new camera or lens during the Black Friday madness and are now sitting at home waiting for some good weather to come along so you can go out and test your new gear? Years ago I used to hibernate in the winter and not think twice about going out to take photos of birds. Then one day I ventured out because I was bored of being stuck inside. So I went for a walk along one of the forested trails near me and I was shocked at what I saw. I'd like to thank you for tuning in and please help to support my channel by subscribing and hitting that notifications button below so you don't miss my next video. And if you'd like to learn more about my bird photography and how I took each photo, check out my Instagram channel where I detail what birding camera I used and the camera settings for each bird photo. So when I was out on my walk, I came across this tree that must have had 30 or 40 birds buzzing around it. I lost count of how many species were there, but at least seven made this tree a home or at least a place to hang out. Lucky for me, I had a camera with me and snapped a whole bunch of photos. All the photos you're looking at right now are the birds taken on this tree. I soon realized, yes, you can actually take bird photos in the winter and capture some good shots. So here are my top tips for taking bird photos in the winter. Now some are obvious, but they can't be understated. So here we go. Dress warm. Yeah, I know. But seriously, being out for 10 or 20 minutes, you'll find your fingers and toes freeze up pretty quickly. So I'll make sure that I have a good pair of warm boots on and two pair of gloves. First pair of gloves are a normal pair of winter gloves. I use these when I'm walking around or when I need to deal with the snow, like brushing it off my camera bag or legs. The other pair of gloves are the ones I use when taking photos. I think all cameras now are touch sensitive for the trigger and focus or just moving around the menus on the camera. So having your fingers out is essential to adjusting the camera and taking bird pics. My second pair of gloves have fingertips that flip off so I can use the camera properly. Now you can buy special camera gloves for the winter, or you can buy ones that have no fingertips. Whichever ones you pick, you'll need them for taking photos of birds in the winter. The rest of my winter clothes are pretty standard. A good jacket with a hood or a hat, and a warm pair of pants. Doing this will obviously keep you warm, but it can also be very helpful with your gear. Cold temperatures drain your batteries quickly, and keeping a spare battery tucked inside your jacket so it stays warm with your body heat, will help you keep your camera working at peak performance. If you need to take a break and head back to your car, remember, bringing a cold camera into a warm building or car will fog up the lenses. If you're just taking a break before you shoot again, pop the camera batteries out and leave the rest of the camera gear in the trunk so it stays cold. One of the best times to go out and take photos of birds in the winter is when the weather is less than ideal. I often head out on dreary days or when it's snowing. You can get some very beautiful settings or ones that are different from the average shot. So if it's snowing out, try and get out while it's snowing or shortly after. The birds will be out. It might be a little harder to find them, but when you do, you'll have some great scenery to capture amazing shots. Something else to keep in mind with winter shooting is the exposure settings. Setting the camera exposure correctly in the winter can be a little tricky, but worth the effort. To set up my exposure, I usually fill the frame with snow, switch to manual mode, set the shutter speed to something fast enough for the types of shots I think I'm going to take. For example, if I see a lot of birds flying around or jumping quickly from branch to branch, I'll set the shutter speed to something around 1 over 1250th. You may have heard the rule that you should never shoot lower than 1 over the length of the lens. I generally shoot faster because my hands and arms are cold and often more shaky than they are in the summer, so a faster shutter speed is better. Now the last thing to set is the ISO. This should be as low as you can get it. All of this said, you want to end up with your camera's exposure to be at plus two stops on overcast days and plus one and a third stops for bright sunny days. If all else fails, stick to shutter priority and make sure the camera is shooting fast enough to capture the bird. Winter bird photography camera gear. So what camera gear should you bring with you when you're out taking pictures of birds in the winter? If you're new to winter bird photography, I suggest keeping your gear simple. Bring one camera, one lens, and a camera bag. 
Winter bird photography can put you in some unpleasant weather and the weather can change quickly. Having a place to ditch your camera quickly is essential to taking care of it. Personally, I shoot with both crop sensor cameras and full frame cameras. Both work well and have their advantages and drawbacks. So whatever you have, take that with you. My lens of choice is very simple. If I'm taking one camera out to capture birds in the snowy winter, I bring the 70 to 200 millimeter lens. This is an all around great lens. I can capture birds that fly up close to me or ones that aren't too far away. With an aperture of f2.8, it is fast and allows me to shoot in less than ideal conditions. This lens is perfect for almost all photography and is really a solid lens for winter photography. In my camera bag, I'll often have two camera bodies with a lens attached to each. I might bring a third lens just in case. Other than the 70 to 200 millimeter lens, I'll bring a camera with a prime lens, maybe a 50 or an 85 millimeter lens. Some things to capture other things of interest while I'm out taking bird photos. These prime lenses are also great for birds too and give some amazing bokeh. The third lens is often a macro lens and for me that's the 100 millimeter f2.8 macro. The cold weather creates some cool opportunities for capturing macro shots. Stay still. The one thing that helps me the most to take sharp, well-exposed bird photos in the winter is the use of a monopod. Yep, a monopod. Having a monopod helps me hold the camera stiller and helps me keep my hands warmer. If I'm waiting for a bird to come by, I can lean the camera up against my body while my hands are in my pockets warming up. If I'm focusing for a long time on a bird, the monopod helps to hold the weight of the camera and lens allowing me to switch one hand in and out of my pocket, keeping it warm. The monopod, like the camera bag, are almost essential for bird photography. These are some of my top tips for taking bird photos in the winter. Winter bird photography is more about staying warm so you can stay out longer than it is about how to use your camera. The general rule is keep warm first and keep your photography simple. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned a few things that will help you improve how you take photos of birds in the winter. Please help to support my channel by subscribing and hitting that notifications button below so you won't miss my next video. And if you'd like to learn more about my bird photography and how I took each bird photo, check out my Instagram channel where I detail what birding camera I used and the camera settings I used for each bird photo. The link is in the description below. If you have any questions or have any tips for winter bird photography, please leave a comment below. I'd like to hear them. Remember, it's your photography. Go and shoot it.